I claw at reality. What is it all about? I ponder three big ideas. Cosmos, consciousness, God. They seem independent, each its own world. But if each reflects reality, that cannot be true. What can unify them? Time. What is time? The universal background through which all events flow, such that order can be sequenced and durations measured. But some physicists and philosophers say no. Time is an illusion. Time is not real. Is this closer to truth? I'm Robert Lawrence Kuhn, and about time, I'm at sea. Literally at sea, I'm attending a conference on the nature of time aboard the National Geographic ship Explorer. The cruise originated in Bergen, Norway. We're traversing the Norwegian fjords en route to Copenhagen, Denmark. I was invited by my friend Max Tegmark, professor of physics at MIT and scientific director of the Foundational Questions Institute, FQXI. FQXI organized the conference called Setting Time Aright. What I was in for, I had no idea. Buffeted by wind and rain, I can hardly ponder the deep essence of time. I can hardly ponder anything other than holding on. Is there a message here? Time does pass very slowly. Finally, I'm inside, surrounded by physicists talking time. The sea of thought rages about me. I don't think that time is an illusion, but I do think that the flow of time is an illusion. The notion of change is an illusion. We used to think of space as this, this three-dimensional stage upon which events took place where stuff happened. And then Einstein came along, right, and told us, no, really, space is a, a four-dimensional space-time where time is just the fourth dimension. Well, there have been so many other things in physics that we thought were fundamental that turned out to be mere illusions that we've started questioning everything, even time itself. We can think of our reality as, as either a three-dimensional place where stuff happens over time or as a four-dimensional place where nothing happens. And if it really is the second picture, then change really is an illusion because there's nothing that's changing there. It's all in there, the past, the present, the future. So if life is like a movie, then this space-time is like the entire DVD. There's nothing about the DVD itself which is changing in any way, even though there all, there's all this drama unfolding in it. We have the illusion at any one moment that the past happened and the future doesn't exist yet and that things are changing. But all I'm ever aware of is my brain state right now. The, the only reason I feel like I had a past is I have information right now which contains memories about the, of, of recorded there about the past. So we need to th distinguish the question what is our ordinary conception of time from the question, what is physics conception of time? If we could focus first on, on this, the subjective ordinary idea of time, right. I think there, there are three main elements that, that we can distinguish and that it's important to distinguish because any one of the three or any combination of the three might turn out to be what we need in physics as objective time. Okay. So one element is the idea that the, the present moment is somehow special. Some people claim that the present moment is all that exists, the past doesn't exist, yeah. the future doesn't exist. The second element is the idea that there's some kind of flow or, or passage or change, that, that time is somehow essentially dynamic. And then the third element is that there's some deep distinction between the past and the future, so that time has a direction in that sense. So once we've got there, then 
Well, the, the really interesting question, I think, is whether any of those three elements should be part of the physics, or whether we should regard all three of them as being in, in somehow subjective, something that, that we humans project onto the world. The interesting questions about time, I think, at least from a philosopher's point of view, are whether any of those three elements are out there in the objective world. Right. And it seems to me the right answer, as far as we can tell from physics, is the, the extreme answer that none of them are in, in the objective world. So fundamental physics seems to provide, certainly provides no, no basis for the idea that there's a privileged special present moment. It seems to have nothing corresponding to, to the flow or passage of time. And at a deep level, it, it seems to recognize no important distinction between the past and the future. So physicists need to be very careful that in thinking about the world, they're not slipping in one of those subjective elements into the way in which they theorize about the world. Now Einstein comes along and says, well, actually, there's a component of our psychological explanation that isn't mirrored in reality. If you look at extreme enough scales, if you look at extreme enough velocities, then you start to see that this psychological picture falls apart. Therefore, it makes natural sense to say, well, maybe time isn't even fundamental at all. And though that it seems so fundamental in our conscious experience, which it does, it might not actually be mirrored in reality. It may be an illusion of some kind, or it may emerge from some um, non-temporal objects. I have the distressing experience of talking to physicists and they tell me that time is not real. Oh, okay. And it confuses me a great deal because it seems to be real. Things happen. Right. And I clap my hands, it happened, that's it. Strictly speaking, if you are going to look at general relativity, there are some ways to state the theory so that it looks like time is not real. But the statement that time does not exist seems to work best if you happen to live in a universe with no matter. And it's true that Einstein's general relativity has solutions that are universes with no matter, but we don't live in one of those. So I would prefer to say that general relativity is not the final theory than say that time does not exist. What is time? Well, I, I was supposed to meet you at 6.30. How did I show up at 6.30? Well, I have a thing. It's a clock, it's a watch. The story of, about this very practical definition of time is an interesting one because when you start taking physics in college and grad school, that's not the time you know. The time is some abstract parameter in your equation. If you, if you study Newton's laws, time is this thing that, that you take derivatives with respect to to get time evolution. If you study the Schrodinger equation, same thing. Time is out there, it's called an external parameter, the independent parameter in your equation of motion. So time, the time we know since, since we learned to tell time on a clock, seems to disappear when you study physics until you get to general relativity. The essence of relativity is that there is no absolute time, there is no absolute space, everything is relative, and you find when you, when you try to discuss time in the context of the universe, you have to go back to the simple idea that you isolate part of the universe and call it your clock, and time evolution only is about the relationship between some parts of the universe and that thing you called your clock. About time, I'm exhilarated, or confused, both probably. There's an excursion among the fjords. I ask Andreas if I might join his group. This is not my world. Fjords, a tiny boat, time and illusion. Climbing slimy, slippery rocks seems an apt metaphor for trying to grasp the nature of time. Whenever I think I've got good grip of these profound concepts, they slip away. When I think I can hold on, I slip away. Because once you're in equilibrium, you don't have ever branching, or, or what, the better way to say it is you have ever branching going both ways. There's no, ah, there's yes. no branching. Right, out. right, of course. Of course. And, 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 and. How to relate our inner subjective sense of human time with the outer objective sense of physicist time. Maybe not half-half? Yes, sure. You, my you boatmates advise me to trust the physics, not my senses. Well, Everything we think we know about time is false. 
Now is not a special moment. Time does not flow. Time has no direction. Back on board, I push further. Given radical notions of time, what are the implications? How crazy can time get? Garrett, a surfer, is at home on the rocks. How about on the ragged cliffs of time? Well, time actually arises the same way that elementary particles in the standard model get their masses, right? Through a process called symmetry breaking. You think of the universe as a four-dimensional fabric that has this E8 group moving over it, 248 sets of circles. And each one of these different circles corresponds to a different kind of elementary particle. So one would correspond to the electron, another to a blew up quarks. So the way time emerges is actually quite interesting. What happens is when you have this fabric with this shape twisting over it, you can calculate what's called the curvature of this combined geometric entity, right? And it basically corresponds to how things are changing, how this twist is changing over the, over the fabric. And that's if that's time, Garrett, I'll never get it. But is time fundamental? the bedrock of reality. There will be regions where space and time become so curled up that they start varying. There are features to this space-time object on distances which are so small that quantum mechanics is clearly important. And so we can't weasel out of this need to put together space-time, in other words, general relativity, with quantum mechanics. Now, there is no sign whatsoever that as we approach these singularities, these highly curved regions, that it's just space breaking down. General relativity is a theory of space-time. The natural thing to expect is that both of those concepts will break down when you get to these regions. That suggests that time is no more fundamental than space, and that ultimately it will be, you know, all of space-time will be thought of as arising from some more uh, fundamental object. So that's the argument for time not being right. fundamental. Raphael, if time is not fundamental, even though time feels fundamental, can we ever be sure about anything? But what about the equivalence of space and time? Albert Einstein proved that space and time are identical. The thing is that that's not actually true. Even within uh, the theory of relativity, time is treated differently than the three space dimensions. To a computer scientist, you know, the big overriding difference between the two is that uh, you can reuse space. Okay, you can keep you know, reusing the same parts of space over and over again. You can put some information there, you can rewrite it later, but you know, unfortunately for all of us, you don't get to reuse time. And once it's gone, it seems gone forever. Dizzy from raging storms at sea, I am not sorry to see land. Dizzy from raging ideas about time, I need clear exposition. Copenhagen seems the perfect place. It was here in the 20th century that Niels Bohr pioneered quantum mechanics, a radical new understanding of how the world works at its deepest level. The Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics privileges probabilities and rejects objective reality. Copenhagen's place in time and space is exemplified by the Round Tower. It was here, in the 16th century, that Tycho Brahe made precise observations of the skies, the last major astronomer not to use a telescope. A few deep breaths, I listen, as philosophers and scientists talk about time. Two different kinds of time? What could that mean? Philosophers make this distinction between tensed and tenseless time. It's a little bit of a tricky distinction. Tenseless time is thinking about the world on a big four-dimensional block, where you have a bunch of events ordered by earlier than or later than other events. Kind of a sequence. Socrates drinking hemlock is earlier than this event. Uh, and maybe the building of the world's uh, first mile-high building is maybe later than this event. So that's uh, the tenseless view. People often think also in a tensed view, 
where they introduce these ideas of past, present, and future, and think of them as you know, global notions which apply everywhere. Socrates drinking hemlock is past, and the mile-high building is in the future. And think of that as some sort of absolute distinction. The past is settled, the future open. Doesn't seem wildly improbable. <laughs> No, but you, you, you can't find that in, in the physics. Yeah, that's, and that's really one of the That's the puzzles. challenge. Craig, you're depriving me of past, present, and future. What do you mean you can't find that in the physics? It's in my head. Is my subjective sense an illusion? Here's what neuroscience tells us, is that time isn't what we once thought it was. So this much we know, that we're not passively tracking the river of time, but instead the brain is actively constructing it. So what does that mean? It means time is, is not Newton's time, where it's the T in the equation that just moves forward and then everything else can be hung on that. So Einstein, of course, came after Newton and said, look, depending on your frame of reference, things can get stretched or squished, depending on how fast you're going. But it's a lot worse than that. There's a neural relativity going on. So what does it tell us about outside objective time? Well, it's hard to say. At minimum, it means that it's, it can run differently than subjective time. At most, it means that maybe the whole thing is illusory. Maybe the whole thing is a construction of the brain in the same way that colors don't actually exist in the outside world. All you have is electromagnetic radiation of different wavelengths, and your brain constructs color. Maybe the brain constructs time, and there's no such thing as that. Now, of course, it's completely bizarre for us to try to wrap our heads around, but this is the sense in which time might be one of the most stubborn psychological filters by which we're experiencing the world, and, and it's hard to reach behind that, just in, just in the same way that it's hard to imagine that there's only electromagnetic radiation and not real <laughs> light in the right, world, right? right? Your brain is, is locked in darkness inside your skull. Your brain doesn't see, it doesn't experience light or photons itself. It only gets conversions into electrical signals of photons, and it literally lights up the world, and you see this whole thing here. David, brains are imperfect. Brains do play tricks. What does it matter how my brain works? Time existed before brains. I should focus on the physics. At a certain fundamental level, time comes into the representation of the world that we find in physics in exactly the way space does. According to lots of these continental critics of the scientific project, this move from the word go <laughs> sealed off the possibility of physics ever encountering the world in a genuinely deep and interesting way. It sealed off access to the sort of deepest and most characteristic feature of our experience of being in the world, this experience of the temporal, this experience of something flowing, this experience of time being completely different from space. So. There were all these other intuitions about time that we are tempted to sort of crudely gesture towards by using verbs like flow or pass or something like that. These things turn out to be exceedingly difficult to make precise. And the strategy of physics was to include time in its fundamental presentation of the world in a way that it was able to make explicit. That makes it incumbent on physics, once the basic laws are laid down, to give an account of how these phenomenological features of time, how the feel of time, although physics doesn't have it there in its metaphysical foundations, is sort of generated by the way the physical world is, okay? No. So we're gonna have to explain away our temptation to use words like flow and passage and so on as somewhat illusory and misguided ways that the physical nature of the world makes us feel. Al, you're telling me that what I feel is false? That my sense of time is illusory and misguided? Because my senses can be misled, but the physics cannot be misled? 
My impression of time is that I see a succession of pictures, as it were, a succession of snapshots con changing continuously one into another. I'm looking at you, you're nodding your head in agreement. So that's the starting point. Now, I think this shows that without that change, we wouldn't have any notion of time, without those differences. And certainly, if one had a, just a record showing just one completely unchanging picture, you couldn't tell whether time had passed or whether nothing had happened at all. Certainly. Uh, so that's, that's the starting point. Now, interestingly, Isaac Newton insisted that even if absolutely nothing at all happened, time would be passing. And that, I believe, is completely wrong because we really need evidence for things. We, that, that wouldn't pass muster in a law of court. So we have to have something that is changing so that we can confirm claims that are made. And bit by bit, scientific notions of time have built up. And people learn, first of all, that the rotation of the stars across the sky, now that shows again that positions of objects are more fundamental than the passage of time because you needed to know when the sun was due south to say it's midday now. So my position is that all evidence we have for time is encoded in static configurations and all of the static configurations we look at or experience subjectively, all of them seem to fit together to make a linear time. So the evidence is there for a linear time. And that is what is so very remarkable, that all of it is without actually seeing an invisible time. But when we look at visible things, they fit together in a quite extraordinary way. Julian, so change is real, but time is not? Time is only a reflection of change? which means that our brains artificially construct a sense of time as if it were flowing, but time is not real? At the end of all of our disputations and conjectures, one question stands tall. Is time fundamental? Time is obviously real in the sense that we use it all the time. What physicists who say time might not be real really mean is that it might not be fundamental. Uh, mm -hmm. That is to say that when we dig down into the laws of physics, we realize that time is not one of the crucial objects, crucial concepts that we require to make sense of reality. Now, even that is actually completely unclear at this moment. The best theories we have of reality right now do include the notion of time in them. It is not an illusion, it is not emergent, it is not a fake. It is really there, it is one of the fundamental things that we need. So the question is, once we finally understand everything, will we have a better theory of everything in which time disappears? And opinions differ. My personal belief is that time is actually going to survive, that once we understand the best possible theory of nature, time will be a big part of it. It's time to assess time. I have two questions and two still shaky answers. One, is time real? Yes, most physicists and philosophers assert that time is real. Yet, our subjective sense of flowing time generated by our brains which evolved for other purposes may not reflect true reality. Two, is time fundamental? At the deepest foundations of nature, is time irreducible? Is time an ultimate descriptor of how the world works? Here, opinion is divided. Many experts now suspect that time is not fundamental. Rather, time emerges out of something more fundamental, something non-temporal. What could that be? I recall what Max told me on the ship. Something we've learned again and again about time and the history of physics is it's a trickster. Every time we think we kind of know what it's doing, it surprises us. Newton thought he knew how time worked and then Einstein said that it slows down when you go fast and that, oops, it slows down near black holes. 
And now quantum mechanics is suggesting that it probably isn't even continuous and smooth the way we thought, but maybe discrete and choppy somehow. And uh, maybe now we're realizing it even has to be emergent somehow from something altogether different. So I think time has been a lot of fun so far in physics and it's going to continue to provide a lot of entertainment and mystery for years to come. Although I've returned to dry land regarding the deep essence of time, I'm still at sea. Only about this am I sure. It takes time to get closer to truth. For complete interviews and for further information, please visit closertotruth.com.